So the first topic we always like to start off with in extension two is this idea of complex numbers. And the wonderful thing about complex numbers is you've already been working with them your whole life. You just don't realize it. Okay. Um, I suppose the simplistic way of explaining or introducing complex numbers is actually a little bit of a lie, but I'll tell it anyway. And it comes from solving quadratics. And here's a very simple quadratic, x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. So we go, oh, x squared equals minus 1, and we go, oh, oh, hang on, we can't do that. In reality, you can, it's just that there's no real solutions. Just like when you're in primary school, maybe, and they said, uh, hey, what's, what's 6 take away 10? And you would have gone, ah, you can't do that. She said, ten's bigger than six. You can't, you can't take it away, you know. And I suppose even before that, they did things like, what's three divided by four? You can't do that. Four doesn't go into three, right? So all the way along, we've, con we've conveniently lied to you so we can progress with our mathematics. And this is just another lie. You can solve this. We just need to know a new number, just like... When you had that problem of 6 minus 10, you needed to know about a new group of numbers, the negative numbers. Once you knew about them, not a problem. 3 divided by 4, once you knew about fractions and decimals, not a problem. So now, we define a new number, and it's not going to be a problem. And that number actually turns out to be a letter, which is I. And it represents the square root of negative 1. Or actually, more accurately, it's not that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. It's that i squared is equal to negative 1. That's more correct. And i is what we call the imaginary number, which quite possibly is a bad name to give it. Because by calling it imaginary, it makes you think it doesn't exist. It's a figment of your imagination. But it does exist. Just like negative numbers exist, and decimals exist, and, I mean, all numbers exist. Well... It depends what you believe, whether numbers actually exist or not. <laughs> I mean, are they something we've created, or did they, were they always there anyway? You know? But that's, a, that's another philosophical argument, I suppose. So, okay, we can now carry on with this uh, argument and go, well, if x squared equals negative 1, the next must equal plus or minus the square root of negative 1. So we get oh, plus or minus i as our, our answer. It's also why it's not a good idea to use I as a pronumeral in algebra. That's how we tend to steer away from I so we don't get confused with are we talking about I the pronumeral or are we talking about I the constant? So we, we tend to not use I. But, so every complex number, so a few definitions here, can be written as Z is one of the more common ones. You see W or Omega used a lot as well. Uh, but as x plus i, y. And to break that up, we say, well, hang on. There's a real part to the number and an imaginary part to the number. Okay? So the real part of the number is the x. The imaginary part is y. Now, both x and y are real numbers. y is just the multiple of the imaginary part. So x and y are both real numbers. Um, so when I said you've been dealing with these your whole life, you have. It's just that the imaginary part of all the numbers you've been dealing with so far is zero. There's been no imaginary part. But you have been working with complex numbers. So z is equal to 3 plus 5i. Very simple question. So, oh, what's the real part? What's the imaginary part? Well, the real part would be 3. The imaginary part would be 5. Now, if the real part is equal to zero, that's what we call a pure imaginary number. There is no real part to it. So a pure imaginary number, and that, so, oh, well, some examples. Root 3, i, minus 6, i, basically any multiple of i, and there's no real part. That's a pure imaginary number. And what you've been dealing with is when the imaginary part is equal to zero, and of course that's what we call a, a real number. So some examples of real numbers. 3 quarters, pi, e, negative 4, they're all real numbers. Now, every complex number has a pair, what we call a conjugate. Now, you've just seen that word before. You've seen it with thirds. It's not a coincidence, because if you think about it, a complex number is a third. 
because what is i the square root of negative one so you're actually dealing with a third there something plus the square root of my uh, square root of i minus one sorry so it has a complex conjugate the difference here is that when we had third conjugates we could make either part change the sign but here it has to be the imaginary part that changes sign so the conjugate of z is x minus i y so if z was minus 2 minus the square root of 7i then its conjugates would be minus 2 plus the square root of 7i and notice the notation for the conjugate it's just a bar over z or over whatever the number is so conjugates all right so you've been dealing with complex numbers there's the big set of complex numbers it contains every number we could possibly think of and even some that we can't think of inside there so far you've just been working in that blue rectangle the real numbers so when y is equal to zero there is this other group of numbers that you haven't been dealing with yet and they're the imaginary numbers notice there's no point of intersection because one is when y equals zero and one is when y doesn't equal zero Inside the real numbers, we then broke it up into other things, rational numbers and irrational numbers. So rational is the ones you, we do know the value of, the ones we can write as a fraction. Irrational numbers, the ones we can't. And then inside the rationals, well then there are the fractions, of course, because rational numbers are the ones we can write as fractions. And we have integers. And inside the integers, we have the natural numbers, also known as the uh, counting numbers. And we have zero, that really weird number. It sort of sits inside the real numbers. So whilst zero is, represents the, the lack of value, the absence of anything, uh, we don't consider it an imaginary number because zero's imaginary part equals zero and we said imaginary numbers are when the imaginary part is not equal to zero so we, we put zero in the real numbers and then of course overlapping all those ones you have negative numbers you have negative of all those things as well notice you don't have negative natural numbers and you don't have negative zero of course so that's lovely we can break all that up the imaginary numbers well not a lot you can do there you got the pure imaginary numbers they're a special type uh, that's pretty much it because I suppose another way of thinking about it not that I would use this expression for imaginary numbers but they are all irrational because they all contain something we don't know the value of that being the square root of negative one so the interesting thing about imaginary numbers is you can't order them you can't say like you would think logically that 3i is bigger than 2i I mean, you would think that would make sense but we don't think of it that way and the reason we don't think of it that way is because if i give you a different question which is bigger two plus three i or three plus two i i mean is the real part more important than the imaginary part or vice versa and you can't and the reason you can't order it in order to order a number you have to be able to place it on the number line and our number line is the real number line so only real numbers can be ordered all right basic operations again something you've seen before because of the beauty of patterns in mathematics it's all very familiar as i said i's a third we already know how to deal with thirds so addition you can think of it as thirds you can think of it as algebra whereas i being the, the pronumeral it is no different if i had to add these two together well, what do you know minus four minus i if I had to subtract them again, same as just algebra or thirds, 12 minus 5i. Multiplication, of course, becomes like a binomial product. So first, outside, inside, last. But this is where, and after a while you'll get used to it, whenever you see i squared, remember i squared is negative 1. So you simplify the third. So i squared, I would change that to negative 1. So that negative 6 becomes positive 6. Yeah. Now, after a while, you'll just think that automatically. You probably won't even write the 6i squared down. You'll automatically think of that as negative 6. 
Uh, let's tidy it up. Minus 26 plus 32i. Okay. Division. Well, with thirds, when we divide by a third, we do a thing called rationalizing the denominator. Here we do something called realizing the denominator. Same idea. The reason we make rational numbers when we're dealing with thirds is so that we can compare the fractions. We can add them together and things like that. So we don't want any thirds on the bottom when we do that. It's the same here. We don't want any imaginary numbers in the denominator because I can't order the denominators. So then how do I know how to add and things like that? So here we go. If I do 4 minus 3i, I, I realize the denominator, which is exactly the same. You multiply by the conjugate. The reason you multiply by the conjugate is on the bottom of the fraction now, you have the difference of two squares, which actually turns out to be the sum of two squares, because you'll end up with i squared, which is a negative 1. So you will end up with a real number on the bottom of the fraction. On the bottom, 64 plus 4. So as I say, sum of two squares rather than difference of two squares when we're dealing with imaginary numbers. Uh, so on the top, well, that tidies. Notice I wrote the, the 6 down straight away there rather than the minus 6i or sorry, plus six, yeah, positive, negative, whichever it was. And tidying that up. Uh, sometimes we like to actually break it up into its real and imaginary. So rather than leaving it all over, 68, although I'd simplify it, I've broken it up into its two parts. Okay, so just some basics about the conjugates, which can save some time. The actual order that you do it in doesn't matter. So if you want to find the conjugate of something, if you've got the sum of two numbers and you're going to say, I want the conjugate of that answer, you could find the conjugate of the two individual numbers and add them, or you could add them then find the conjugate. It works either way. So it doesn't matter when you take the conjugate. Same with multiplication. Same with division. I didn't bother writing down the subtraction because of course addition and subtraction are actually the same thing. It's just that you're adding a negative. So same with subtraction. This one's very useful. And that's what we just did with realizing the denominator. If you multiply a number with its conjugate, sum of two squares. So the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So whenever you see z times z conjugate. And a quick way of finding the reciprocal then of a complex number, you will always end up with the conjugate over that z times z. Because notice all I've really done there is multiplied by top and bottom by the conjugate. So if you remember that, oh, well, the ZZ conjugate is always going to be the, the sum of the two squares. I know it's going to be oh, the conjugate over the sum of the two squares. Bingo. You've turned the uh, complex number upside down. So let's find the reciprocal of uh, 4 minus 3i. Then I'd go the conjugate, 4 plus 3i, sum of two squares, so 16 plus 9. And there's my answer. Well, how do we deal with equations then? How do we solve equations now that we have these things? Well, you can't, remember there was no overlap with the real numbers and the imaginary numbers. So it's sort of like solving two separate sets of equations. The real part must equal the real part, the imaginary part must equal the imaginary part. Never the twain shall meet. But again, that's exactly the same when we had those surdic equations, if you remember. The third equal the third, the same idea. So to formalize that, if you know a1 plus b1i equals a2 plus b2i, there is only one possibility that a1 is a2 and b1 is b2. Real part equals the real part, imaginary part equals the imaginary part. Uh, here's a simple little equation. There's a couple of ways I could do it. I could uh, expand the left-hand side out and then go real equals real and so on. Or I could just divide both sides by 2 plus 3i and then equate real and imaginary. Which way did I go? I expanded the left-hand side out. So there's our left-hand side. So therefore I know the real part, 2x minus 3y must equal 4. And the imaginary part, 3x plus 2y must equal negative 2. And simultaneous equations from there should get us our answer. x is 2 on 13 and y ends up being 6 on 13.
So there's our solution to that equation. Of course, you could have simultaneous equations. Okay? But again, it is no different. The elimination method is simply says, well, let's make the coefficients of the pro numeral the same. So either I'm going to make the Z's both 2Z or I'm going to make the W's both 2IW. doesn't really matter. It's still the same idea. I will eliminate one of the pro numerals. So in this case, I made the W's the same. Multiply everything in the uh, bottom one by 2. Just like a normal simultaneous equation, I get 3Z is 2 plus 5I. Divide by 3, there's Z. Substitute back in. So exactly the same. No different. The rules of maths have not changed. <coughs> Move that to the other side. Divide by 2i. But remember, we always realize the denominator. So I do not leave it as 10 on 6i. That becomes 2 thirds minus 5 thirds i. So multiplying top and bottom by i, if you like. So there's my solution for w and Z. So all the techniques exactly the same. So to start off with, in our Cambridge uh, 1A, there's a handful of questions and in the Patel, which is the other handout I gave you, I, I just picked two questions out of that one because the exercises are pretty much the same sort of questions, but I think in the Patel one, I must like 28 AC for some reason. Must be something interesting about that question, I would imagine. 